Good evening and a welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the city of champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers basketball tonight. The Lady Boxers welcome in the New Bedford Whalers for their first divisional matchup of the season. Brockton comes in with a record of three wins, three losses. New Bedford comes in with a record of six wins and four losses. My name is Peter Zimbor. Join alongside my broadcast partner for the very first time tonight, Mark Asselon. Mark, welcome to the broadcast table. Mark, what can we expect going into this game? You've been watching Brockton Lady Boxers basketball games throughout the year and following the game. What do you think we can expect tonight? And as someone who's played Brockton High School Athletics, how much more significant is this game considering it's a divisional matchup against a big three foe? Well, you know, Brockton, they have a pretty good senior class this year. <clears throat> Sorry. And they got um, Chanel Melton, who's been a four-year um, varsity player over at Brockton High School. And they're missing um, Christian McDuffie. She's a um, four-year um, varsity pl player also. But, you know, we're expecting a great matchup. Obviously, this Derby team is a good team. They're six and four. They have a pretty good record. So we're expecting a pretty good matchup from this Derby Hilltopper team. Starting five for both teams, Mark? Uh, for Brockton boxers, we have number four, Janor um, Janoisha Silvermore, number 11, Chanel Melton, number 21, Dominique Cooley, and um, number, 21, uh, number 22, Tatiana Diaz, and number 23, Ch um, Chantel Jordan. And for the Durfee Hilltoppers, we have number 10, um, Bailey Brooks, number 12, Tara McKinn, number 14, Brianna Camaro, and number 3, Jalen Jackson, and number 13, Tony Murray McGlory. It's come to my attention that I introduced the top of the broadcast as if Brockton was playing New Bedford. I mixed up my big three divisional opponents just there. They do have similar colors, though. Both teams are uh, yes, they do. black and red. Yes, and this game is very significant because, you know, being a divisional game, um, there's a playoff spot that are um, in jeopardy right now, so this is going to be a big one for the Brockton Boxers that they need. Have our first personal foul of the game called down low. That's going to go against Brockton's number 21, Dominique Coley. This will be inbound from underneath by the New Bedford Whalers. 7.08 left to go in the opening quarter. We're scoreless here at Staff Gymnasium as the Durfee Hilltoppers inbound the ball. They're in with that New Bedford thing again a moment ago. Brockton's going to come off with the steal upon the missed pass on the inbound. That is number 11, Chanel Melton for Brockton down low. Misses the layup. Durfee with the rebound coming down now for. Uh, that was great. Still, also by number four for the Brockton Boxers, Gionisha Silva Moore. Tatiana Diaz, the short jumper, no good, rebounded. Ultimately by Jalen Jackson for the Hilltoppers. And she'll lose it to Tatiana Diaz, who ripped it out of her hands, but a jump ball is called by the official possession arrow points in favor of Brockton. 6.35 to go in the opening quarter. We are still scoreless. You mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Christian McDuffie not playing in today's game, Mark. Yes, um, she has a shoulder injury, which has been keeping her off the court. And also, that has been a good, um, that had a lot of aspect on the Brockton Boxers. You know, she's one of the captains, so that slowed them down as a team offensively and defensively. So it would be great when they have her back, but they still playing great basketball out there. Foul called on Bailey Brooks for Durfee. Hilltopper ball. And Jalen Jackson bring the ball down the floor for the Hilltoppers. Mark, we should mention to our viewers that you were a starting offensive lineman on the Brockton Boxers football team this year. Yes, I, yes, I was. Brockton you know, we, football team did not have much trouble at all with Jeffrey, as I recall, when you guys yeah, played that was them. A, that was a pretty good game right there. You know, it was it was just a good um, with Austin Robert coming back. It was just a good confidence boost for us as a team, that game right there. And winning the big three, something we haven't done in two years, that was a big thing for us. And, you know, us as a senior class this year, we knew we had to, you know, play good football. And, you know, we went to the Super Bowl. Things didn't go as well as we wanted to. But, you know, hard work does pay off because coming into the season, we was ranked number 22 in the state, and nobody thought it was going to go that far. That was a foul on Chanel Melton for Brockton. Three team fouls against Brockton. Two of them against Melton. Diaz brings it in for Brockton. First bucket of the game as she lays it up and in Brockton on top. 2-0. 5.50 to go in the opening quarter. And we could also say Brockton's playing very good defense right now. Giving the Hilltoppers a tough time. And it looks like they're in the main defense. Short jumper by Durfee, no good, rebounded by Brockton's Gianasia Silvermore, gets it over to Tatiana Diaz, bring the ball down the floor, has a teammate in the corner, that being 
Chanel Melton back to Diaz over to Silva Moore. She'll shoot for three, no good. And a rebound by Brockton. Scrappy ball playing by the Lady Boxers. Substitution into the game. Brockton is subbing number 24, um, Catherine Lewis, um, for number 11, Chanel Melton, due to foul troubles, I'm guessing. Jalen Jackson bringing the ball down the floor for the Hilltoppers. Gets it over to number 10, Bailey Brooks. Brooks inside to number 14, Brianna Camera. Kamara, and she puts it off the glass twice. No good. Tatiana Diaz comes with a rebound for Brockton. 4.50 to go in the opening quarter. Brockton with a two-point lead. Two to nothing is your score. And Jordan for three sinks it. They're going to say her foot was on the line. So... Brockton leads four to nothing. Hey Peter, one thing I find interesting about the Durfee Hilltop team is the fact that their starting point guard number three, um, Lynn Jackson, is only a sophomore. That's pretty good, you know, that she's already playing at the varsity level. And also Brockton, they got a couple young guys uh, playing on the varsity level, a couple sophomores and juniors, you know, that are being good participation in the team. Bodes well for both teams' future, considering they have talented underclassmen. Foul called on Giannacia Silva Moore for Brockton. This allows them a 12. Tara McCann to head to the free throw line and shoot two for the Hilltopper. She makes her first of two, and that will be the first bucket of the game for the Hilltoppers. Four to one is your score. Brockton with the lead. Four minutes and 31 seconds left to go in the first quarter. And Brockton just substituted Aaliyah Brito um, for Domni Cooley. Having some fresh leg on the court will really help them play some basketball because right now both teams are playing a little bit sloppy right now, you could say. And another foul is called. This goes against Durfee after the missed free throw shot. A foul goes against number 13, Tony Marie Miglior. So two team fouls called against the Hilltoppers. Now Brockton bringing the ball down towards their end of the court. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Over to Chantel Jordan, back over to Diaz at the top of the key. She's looking down low and keeping it in bounds initially is number 35, Aliyah Brito, but she swats that basketball out of bounds. Durfee ball. The one thing I've, I've seen the difference of the defensive side of both teams, Durfee, who's playing more of a 3 2 zone defense, and Brockton's playing more of a man with them. So we'll see which defense come out on top at the end of the game tonight. Diaz with the ball at the top of the key. Tries to get it over to Silva Moore. It was initially deflected by a Durfee player. Brockton retains possession of the basketball. Chantel Jordan inside the perimeter. No good. Rebounded by Bailey Brooks for New Bedford. Scrapped for the ball. Brockton comes up with it. And they're going to call traveling against Brockton as Chantel Moore slid with the basketball upon diving for it. Durfee inbounding the ball. Brockton has a lead of score of 4-1. Jump ball called as two players from opposing teams get tied up for the basketball down low. This time the possession arrow points in favor of Durfee who will inbound from down low. 3.33 on the clock. Brockton with his lead 4-2-1. Jalen Jackson over two. Number 14 Kamara from way outside. No good. Diaz with the rebound for Brockton. She's got a lot of red shirts surrounding her. She'll try to take it in on her own off the glass. No good. Ball goes out of bounds off. Jalen Jackson for Durfee. So it'll be Brockton ball, or no, they changed their call. It appeared initially they were going to call it off of Durfee. Now they say off Brockton Durfee ball. Jackson taking the ball of court as she calling an offense. Brockton playing great defense right now. And that's going to be a travel called against Gionacia Silva Moore for Brockton, taking an extra big step. Three minutes flat on the clock. Brockton leads four to one. Good defense exhibited by most teams, by both teams, more or less. Mark, as this is a fairly low-scoring game with just under three minutes to go now in the opening quarter. Four to one. Jalen Jackson takes it in on her own, lays it in. Four to three is your score. Brockton's lead. Cut to one at 2.42 left to go in the quarter. And 
on the outside for three for Brockton was Silva Moore. No good. Brockton does get the rebound down low. It's Aliyah Brito. Puts it up, but she gets called for traveling. Bucket doesn't go in regardless. So it'll be Durfee ball. 2.34 remaining in the quarter. Jackson is taking the ball up court. She passes it to her teammate. Jackson gets the ball back again. Jalen Jackson down low for Durfee gives the Hilltoppers their first lead of the game, 5-4, to four, 2 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. And I don't think Chantel Jordan was anticipating that pass whatsoever. Recoups gets the ball back over to Diaz, back to Jordan, shoots for 3, no good. This will be rebounded by Durfee. Well, Peter, today in school today, I was talking to Chantel Jordan. Right now, she's battling with a uh, thumb injury. She's playing with a thumb injury. That also might have an aspect with her dropping some of these balls she's receiving, some of those passes she's receiving from T um, Tatiana Diaz today. Jordan with the ball right now. Does have some tape on that left wrist, which does cover her thumb a little bit. Leah Brito down low for Brockton. Puts it up, no good. That's rebounded by... Silva Moore off the glass and in. Brockton reclaims the lead 6-5, to five, under a minute 30 to go. We're in the first quarter, Brockton with a slight edge. Jackson for Durfee down low, hands it off to Brianna Kamara off the glass and just as quickly as Durfee relinquished their lead, they take it back 7-6 to six with a buck 10 to go in the first quarter. by Brockton. Travel on the Durfee Hilltop plays Brockton ball right now. Moore is going to inbound the ball to Diaz. Durfee comes up with the basketball. Less than 40 seconds to go. Brooks in the corner has a wide open teammate. Shoots a three. No good. Rebounded by Chantel Jordan. And jump ball is going to be called in the paint. Brockton ball with 30.1 seconds to go in the first quarter. Well, Peter, one thing that's hurting Brockton a lot right now is the turnovers they're having on the ball um, with the ball right now. So what Brockton has to do, they have to take care of that basketball. They're not turning it over, giving Durfee um, some free points out there. <laughs> And another jump ball is called on the inside. This time it's Durfee's turn. Substitution by Durfee as number 13. Um, number 13, Tori Murray McGlory comes out. And she's replaced by uh, Maria Rago who's a junior. Little confusion there as Durfee actually inbounded the ball midway through the substitution. <laughs> well, the Plus first quarter, yeah, the first quarter comes to a conclusion and though Brockton led most <laughs> of the opening frame, it's Durfee with the one-point edge at the end of one. Seven to six is your score. Peter Zimbor and Mark Asselin here at Staff Gymnasium, home of the Brockton Lady Boxers. Lady Boxers coached by their head coach, April Dingwell. Durfee Hilltoppers under the tutelage of head coach Brendan Kelly. And we could say both teams, you know, they're playing pretty evenly right now, as you can, and the scoreboard tells it all with a one point different lead by the Durfee Hilltoppers. And I'm sure when Coach Dingwell, the Brockton Boxers, is going to make some adjustment right now. You know, hopefully, it could pull up some points and have the lead by halftime. We're getting ready to start the second quarter right now. With the score six, seven to six, Durfee Hilltop with the edge over the boxers. Chanel Melton is back in the game for the Brockton boxers. Yes. 
So Durfee will inbound to begin the opening, or to begin the second quarter. Bailey Brooks with the ball for the Hilltoppers. As Durfee works the ball around to various teammates. Great defense, a great offense by both teams. Kamara with somewhat of a hook shot gives Durfee their biggest lead of the game at 3, 9 to 6 is the score. 7.37 left to go in the first half. Tatiana Diaz with the ball for Brockton over to Silva Moore. She'll try for three. No good. That one rolled around the rim. Rebounded by the Durfee Hilltoppers. That's number 34, Jordan Govin, who came down with the basketball. Gets it over to Brianna Kamara. And number 14, um, uh, Brianna Kamara, also from Durfee Hilltoppers, uh, who is also a sophomore. And they got a pretty young team over there, but they play great basketball tonight. Paulina Fiedelberg with a little bit of happy feet. Turns the ball over due to a travel. Tatiana Diaz with the ball now for Brockton. Gets it over to Chanel Melton. Melton back to Diaz over to Chantel Jordan. And then now. Brockton got the rebound. Chanel Melton with the ball again. Passes the ball to Moore. Shimon Melton takes a shot. Rebounded by Brockton again. And Moore makes a shot in for two more points for Brockton. And score 8 9 with Durfee leading by one. Giannisha Silva Moore gets Brockton within one. Like you said, Mark, 6.30 to go here in the first half. Kamara with the ball four. The Hilltoppers gets it over to Bailey Brooks, puts it up no good. And ultimately, Durfee comes down with the rebound. A lot of second, third, and fourth chance opportunities by the Durfee Hillsoppers. And at number 23, Carson Morea Rego puts it up and in. 11 to 8 is your score. Durfee with the lead. 6.07 left to go in the first half. Number three for the Durfee Hillsoppers, the starting point guard Jackson checks back in the game. And Lewis checks it for more for Brockton. Travel called on Durfee, number 13. Miss McGuire. And Chanel Melton's gonna end the ball, inbound the ball to Tatiana Diaz. Brockton unable to move the ball inside yet on this particular drive. Chanel Melton with the ball, dishes it out to Diaz down low. She finds Chantal Jordan off the glass and then Brockton within one, 11 to 10, under 5.30 to go in the half and that's what Brockton need to do to get the ball inside. Good look by Tatiana Diaz and nice layup courtesy of Chantel Jordan. High school sports is all about, all about working with your teammates and having fun out there. Your Britos um, checks into the game for Dominic Cooley. And Tatiana Diaz takes the ball um, up the court with Brockton up by one point. We'll score 11 to 10 Durfee. Traveling called against Brooks for the Hilltoppers. Brockton ball. Brockton trailing by one. 448 left to go in the half. Brockton now with an opportunity on this possession to reclaim the lead, but not going to come quite so quickly as initially. Comes up with the rebound for Brockton Box. She's just taking up the court on a fast break. And she got here with the offensive foul. The crowd letting the ref know they're not happy with the call right now. Number 35, um, Mackenzie Crumley for the Durfee Hilltop is just checking into the game. Cody, you're up, up, Kentucky! Rotary, Rotary, Rotary! Yeah. 
Moore takes the ball to court for the Brockton Boxers. Passes the ball to Jordan. Shavu calling Moore. Good shot by Jackson. Jackson with the three. Durfee on top, 14 to 10. Diaz trying to answer back for Brock and gets it over to Jordan. Back to Diaz. Diaz calling out signals to her various teammates. To Jordan, inside to Aliyah Brito. One bounce, turn around, no good. Rebounded by Durfee. 340 left to go in the first half. Brock controlling by four, 14 to 10 to the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers. Biggest lead of the game now for Durfee, 16 to 10. Diaz tries to bring it down low. We've got a call inside the paint. Diaz gonna be shooting two from the foul line. First of the two shots. This is the second round of that game. Nice defensive play by Tatiana Diaz with the block deflects it out of bounds. 313 to go in the first half. 16 to 11 is your score. Durfee with the lead. How much of an impact, Mark, do you think it is? that as far as experience playing this season is concerned because Durfee has a significant advantage in that respect. They've had 10 games on the season where this Brock and Lady Boxers team has had just six. Yes, you know, the fact that um, the more games you play, it just has to say practice uh, makes perfect. The more games you play, the more practice you get, the more, you know, the team bonds together and you know, they could gel together and make great plays. So the fact that this Brock and Boxer um, team is hit right now with the injury bug and also haven't had that much um, game playing experience. That also, you know, we can definitely say has a big, you know, effect on how they're playing. Giannisha Moore for Brockton makes it a three-point game, 16 to 13 Brockton trails, two minutes and 22 seconds left to go in the first half. Brito with the rebound for Brockton gets it over to Tatiana Diaz. Step by Tatiana Diaz. Shrabble calling Jordan. Durfee ball. So less than two minutes remain in the first half now. Durfee leads Brockton 16 to 13. First divisional matchup of the season for both of these teams respectively. Shooting two from the foul shot line. Number 
before the game, Peter, I had a chance to talk to uh, Christian McDuffie. She told me she had an MRI done to her shoulders and it's actually dislocated. The doctors told her she'll take to tell her about three weeks to return. So hopefully the boxers could hang on until she returned and get um, and they could have their senior back. Well, with less than 45 seconds to go in the first half, now Brockton trailing 17 to 13. Durfee able to rip the basketball away from Brock and bring the ball down the floor for the Hillshoppers is Brianna Kamara. Kamara might opt to take it in on her own. Just does just that. Misses, rebounded by Aliyah Brito, however. We have a whistle, and I think it is against Brito for the push. Tatiana Diaz passes the ball tomorrow. More passes back to Tatiana. Tatiana tomorrow. Tatiana with the ball. Brockton once again turned the ball over. Carson, five out. Five out. Number 22 for the Duffy Hilltopper, um, Pauliana Fiddleberry just checked into the game. Ready to shoot. Go, 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 attack. Five seconds left for the first half. Their feet the ball. Well, the first half comes to a conclusion. And the Durfee Hilltoppers led throughout the second quarter. They have the edge over Brockton, 17 to 13 at the moment. You're watching BCA Sports presentation of Lady Boxers Basketball. Peter Zimbor and Mark Asselin courtside here at Staff Gymnasium. We'll step aside for a quick breather. When we return, we'll have first half scoring leaders and second half action. Stick with us here on BCA Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Brockton Staff Gymnasium as the Brockton Lady Boxers are facing the Durfee Hilltoppers. Um, we'll begin the second half with the Hilltoppers with the lead as the score is 17-13 Durfee. Right now, Moore has the ball, passes it to Melton. So, Peter, um, what do you think Brockton needs to do in order to come back in this game? Well, you alluded to it in the first half. The turnovers have been an issue. The truth of the matter is, it's only a four-point ball game. It's not necessarily like they're out of it. It's just Brockton got off to a fast start in the first quarter and seemed to have lost it as the first half wore on. We'll see if they have a second win here in the second half. Yes, they, they, the turnover is really what's killing them right now. Right now, Jackson for the Durfee Hilltopper has the ball, passes it to number 12, her team. Durfee sh shoots the ball, no good. Brockton has the ball. Another thing that I noticed in the first half of play from Brockton that could be of some improvement, and it's not just this game, it's actually something I've noticed from the Lady Boxers throughout the season, is that their opponents generally get second chance opportunities far more often than Brockton. Brockton needs to be a little bit more efficient with their offensive rebounds. Yeah, they have to get a little bit more aggressive down the baseline. But, you know, as you know before, they're missing um, one of their, one of their um, girls down low. So that right there is also an aspect in the game. But hopefully the boxers could take care of the turnovers and make a comeback in this game. The Durfee Hilltoppers with the ball. The score, um, the, it's 6.38 left in the third quarter. The score is 17-13 Hilltoppers. Tatiana Diaz takes the ball up the court on a fast break. And makes it in. The score is 17-15 Brockton with 6.26 left in the third quarter. Jackson takes the ball up the court for the Hilltoppers. As we said before, this game right here is a big three game. You know, playoff games um, are on the line right now, so the boxers really need to come up with a win today. Brockton with the ball. Tatiana Diaz takes the ball up court. Tries to lay it up, no good. Brockton with the um, offensive rebound. Chanel Milton shot, no good. Hilltoppers with the ball with 5.45 left in the game. 17-15, Hilltoppers lead over um, Batu. Aggressive foul called on uh, Dominique Cooley. It's good to see that Broncos play some aggressive basketball right now, Peter. That, that's right there is going to turn the boost up that they need right now. Absolutely, and with neither team scoring just yet here in the second half, 
Durfee with an opportunity to draw first blood in the second half as Jackson heads to the free throw line. Yeah, and as a high school um, athlete, I, I know that you know when a team plays with a lot of emotion, that also helps them to come back. And as you know, with the football team, there was a lot of time we was down this year, but you know, we just played with a lot of emotion, and that helped us come back. So hopefully, Lady Boxers can couple up with a win tonight. Chanel Melton with the Brockton Boxers has the ball. Passes it to Tatiana Diaz. Tatiana Diaz passes it to her. Durfee with the def defensive rebound. Yeah. Foul call on Tatiana Diaz for the Brockton Boxers. Jackson of the Durfee Hilltoppers. Actually, Durfee's got inbound the ball in. They're not yeah. going to shoot too. Yeah, that was not in the act of shooting, so they'll inbound it from down low. Still not the team has scored as we're just about three minutes into the second half. Murphy shoots it no good. Mark takes the ball up court. Brockton makes a basket right now. They could tie this game up. 4.51 left in the third quarter. 15-17, uh, Durfee has the lead. Moore passes the ball to Jordan, jump ball. And Durfee will have the ball from that jump ball. Jackson takes the ball, court for Durfee. Brockton playing the man defense right now. Tatiana Diaz saying great defense on Jackson, forcing Durfee to call a timeout with 425 left in the game. Score 17-15. Brockton boxes lead. Peter, how, what can you talk about the way Brockton playing so far in the second half? Well, they're they're ahead in the second half, two to nothing. We'll say that. But you know, this game has been rather slow moving and low scoring. It's gonna come down to which team is more consistent, and it could come down to the final few possessions. I think consistency is the key with what I just said. Yes, I, that, that, I, I, agree, I definitely agree with you. This is the first Lady Boxers home game of the 2012 to 2013 season that we have covered here at BCA Sports. That includes the welcome presence of the Brockton High School cheerleaders. Yeah, they're as doing they a did great not, job right now. <laughs> yeah, they did not join. They did not join any basketball events in the calendar year 2012 for the 2012 to 2013 season, but now that the new year has arrived, cheerleaders are here cheering on their team and an okay crowd for a Friday night here in early to mid-January. I'm sure that as the season continues on and the Lady Boxes inch closer to the postseason, which hopefully they will be a part of, fanfare will grow and a crew, not only for the Lady Boxers team, but also for the men's varsity team as well. You know, the kind of talent that the Brock and Lady Boxer team have this year, I do believe they have, you know, they have the potential to go to the postseason this season. Durfee inbounding the ball, Brockton playing great defense right now. Once again, Durfee will inbound the ball as Moore um, hits it out of bounds. She has a fun name to say, Gionacia Silva Moore. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I have a tough time saying it. <laughs> I like saying her name, and I also like Aliyah Brito. It's yeah, a Aaliyah fun name Brito. to pronounce. Brito. And both of them have great personalities. Brito gets the rebound for Brockton Boxers. Tatiana Diaz in the fast work passes to Chanel Melton, and Brockton ties the game up with four, four minutes and 12 seconds left in the third quarter. Excellent exhibition of teamwork by Brockton Diaz, noticing Melton down low fairly all alone, and she just put that one off the glass and then tied the game, but just as quickly, Durfee's gonna retake the lead thanks to Bailey Brooks. Then the crowd is starting to get into it for the Brockton Boxers right now. Diaz trying to draw the foul. Jump ball. And you mentioned the crowd getting back into this game a tad. Moments ago, I referred to this game as being slow paced, a bit methodical. It picks up a bit, and that's all it took to get this crowd back into it. 
So it was a jump ball. Actually, it was a technical foul. Now, I did not see what warranted that technical foul, but it is against Tatiana Diaz, according to our scoreboard officials, explaining things with Brockton Lady Boxes head coach April Dingwell. Earlier on in this game, Tatiana Diaz was spoken to by the official about something that she had said, and it wasn't that she was overly emotional and that she was loud in what she said. Whatever she said was quiet, but apparently the referee did not appreciate it. Well, sometimes as an athlete, the game gets into your head, and you know, sometimes you know, with the emotion involved, you might say things that some of you know high school referees would not let you say. So hopefully, she can learn from this. And well, you mentioned earlier emotion being a positive thing and getting the Lady Boxers back into this game. Not that they were ever out of the game, but reclaiming the lead is what you were referring to. It can also be a detriment to a team if you let it affect you negatively, i.e talking derogatorily to the referees. They're not going to take that. They're going to issue a tech. That's absolutely true. With the jump ball, Brockton in favor. Um, Chantel Jordan gets the ball, and she's taking it up the court. Yeah. Hilltoppers with the turn um, gets a um, ball from Brockton on a turnover. Travel call on number 34 for the Berkeley Hilltoppers. There's been an exorbitant amount of traveling calls in this game for a varsity game, and they've all been valid as well. We're seeing yeah. extra pitter-patter steps from each team. We've even seen more than pitter-patter steps from each team. We're seeing full-on steps. Yes. We got, the referees, you know, they're not doing a bad job officiating this, um, um, the game today. They're officiating the game pretty fairly so far. And once again, Brockton turned the ball over. Jackson's taking the ball court for the Durfee Hilltoppers. More playing defense on her. Number 10, the captain, Bailey Brooks, makes it in for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Put them up with the lead at 23 to 17 with 2.45 left in the game. Chanel Melton with the ball. Passes it to Moore. Passes it to Jordan, Jordan shoots. It goes in. We have a four-point game with Durfee with the lead. Hey, 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 Celtic, Celtic. The captain, Bailey, with the ball. She pulls up. No good. Brockton ball. One thing, Peter, you need as a center um, is to be aggressive down low. And Aaliyah Brito is one of the uh, Lady Boxers' center. One thing about her, I've been watching her play so far this season. She plays down low, very aggressive. Kind of reminds me of Kendrick Perkins a little bit. Not a bad comparison for Aaliyah Brito. Diaz takes him, taking the ball off for the Boxers. 150 left in the uh, third quarter. Durfee lead. 23-19. Great defense by the Hilltoppers. Diaz with the ball, takes it, um, tries to lay up, no good. Reba offensive rebound by the boxers. Jordan shoots, no good. Hilltoppers, number 34 gets a rebound, but travels at it, and Brockton ball again. That's the second consecutive traveling call on Jordan Govin. In the 34 for the Durfee Hilltoppers. And she'll take a bit of a breather as Tara McCann comes into a place with a buck 28 left to go in the third period. Great pass by Diaz to Jordan. Durfee playing great defense. Get Brockton to turn the ball over. Number 10 for the Hilltoppers shoots the ball, no good. Lays it up, no good. Durfee with the offensive rebound. And foul call on Brockton. Number 14, Brianna Camaro, who's a sophomore, is going to take two 
two sh uh, shots um, at the foul line. Peter, what can you tell on how both teams are playing so far right now in this third quarter? Well, Brockton began the second half with a little bit of a surge. However, it appears that right before that Tatiana Diaz technical foul, Durfee started picking up some momentum, and ever since then, the momentum has only continued. And now, with 62 seconds left to go in the third quarter, a six-point lead for Durfee, which is their biggest lead of the second half. Brock, then they got a freshman on the court, number 14, Nadia Montero. He makes it in. The crowd picking it back up in staff gymnasium. Great block by Chantel Jordan, but rebounded by Durfee Hilltoppers. Good job by Brianna Kamara of Durfee of grabbing that basketball after it was deflected by Brockton and putting it off the glass and in. So a six-point lead once again for Durfee, 27-21. Brockton not out of this game, however. Still eight minutes of basketball to be played once this quarter concludes in 21 seconds. Tatiana Chiz gets called for the charge. And I thought that was a good call by the official as that Durfee player did have her feet planted. I know Tatiana Diaz not going to be pleased with that call. The one thing Brockton players don't want to do, they don't want to get into uh, foul trouble, so they're going to sub Tatiana Diaz in for Lewis, number 24 for the Brockton, for the Lady Boxers. Chantel Jordan comes up with the turnover. Brockton ball with 10 seconds left in the game, I mean in the third quarter. Hilltoppers with the turnover, Hilltopper ball. Travel call on the Hilltoppers. Brockton ball with 1.6 second left in the third quarter. The score is 27 to 21. Hilltoppers with a six point lead. Giannisha Silvermore, she's gonna get the chance to launch this one. And didn't really have a good look at it as Jalyn Jackson was right in her face as a defender for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, both teams will play pretty good basketballs in the third quarter, but as, as you can see, the turnovers has really been a factor in this game um, tonight. Well, we'll be entering the home stretch of this game momentarily. 27 to 21 is your score. Durfee Hilltoppers with a six point lead over Brockton. And the good thing about basketball is as sloppy as this game has been at times and perhaps slow paced and methodical as we've talked about, the only statistic that truly matters is the score. Doesn't matter about turnovers, doesn't matter about who's getting more rebounds and second chance opportunities inside the paint. Brockton only down by six, not insurmountable. Brockton just needs one little surge of momentum to get back into this. But most important thing right now is uh, for the boxers to also be calm, calm so that they don't turn turn the game over and so they can slow down with the turnovers because they don't want to you know, get over hyper and start making mistakes that could cost the game. The Durfee Hilltoppers will inbound the ball to start the fourth quarter. for the Hilltoppers, Brayley Brooks makes the shot in. And Brockton once again turns the ball over. There's been a few instances in this game of various Brockton players being unable to accept passes. Passes just going right through the hands and out of bounds, and that was a case right there. And that's one thing I'm sure Coach Dangwell will be working on with the team um, next week, um, starting tomorrow at practice. But we did mention that the, Brock, the Lady Boxers only have played six games a season. That also has an aspect in them playing a little bit sloppy. It's been also a while since they last had their game action, which was over Christmas break. So it's been a while since they've been in the game situation. Get a stop, Brad! 
Moore with the ball, shoots a three. No good. Uh, Brockton ball. Number 22, Tatiana Diaz checks in for Nadia Montero, number 14. Six fifty-five left in the third quarter. 29-21, Durfee leads the game. Brock and Sean put something together offensively. Jump ball. Hey, Good. Red! Brock in favor of the jump ball. Three seconds left in the shot clock. So Brockton needs to um, shoot the ball real quick as soon as they inbound the ball. <laughs> Captain Chanel Melton checks in for Lewis. Red, we got a rebound. It is we good to have rebound. your seniors in the fourth quarter when you're down due to experience that they have. Nice defensive play by number 12, Tara McCann, for the Durfee Hilltoppers. Blocking that Tatiana Diaz shot. Tara so McCann also, who's a senior captain for the Hilltoppers, playing great basketball tonight. Tatiana Diaz comes up with a defensive rebound. Overthrow Chanel Melton, turnover Durfee ball. Number 22 checks in on the game for the Hilltop with 621 left in the uh, fourth quarter. 29-21. Durfee with the lead. Offensive rebound by the Hilltoppers. Rocking with the defensive rebound. Tatiana Diaz with the ball taking it up court. As she straight through to Durfee, defender to lay it up, no good rebounded by Moore. Chanel Melton with the ball. Passes it to Diaz. Melton with the ball, Moore wide open. Takes it in, tries to lay up, no good. Hilltopper rebound, Durfee ball. Jackson with the ball as she slows down the game. Jackson slowing down the ball, pass it to Bailey Brooks, her senior captain. The one thing I've um, noticed with the Durfee Hilltop is even after shooting the ball, they follow the ball, they're aggressive to the ball, and this is the reason why they have come up with the ball most of those turnovers. We're talking about second opportunities a little bit here throughout the second half, and that's more or less the reason why, Mark. S oh Sophomore um, Bianca Camara shooting two at the line. Scores 30 to 21, 5 11 left in the game. A few sophomores are making a significant impact in this game for the Durfee team, which bodes well for their future, particularly in the the next two years, we talked about Jalyn Jackson and Kamara as well. Beautiful pass to Chanel Melton, in and out. Durfee rebounding the ball. Chantel Jordan comes up with the ball. Aaliyah Britos pass the ball to Chanel Melton. Passes the ball to Diaz. Passes the ball to Moore. Shoots a three, no good. No top of the ball. Great attempt to save the ball by number 10, Bailey Brooks, but still blocked the ball. Number 
11. Chanel Melton will inbound the ball. Chantel Jordan passes it to Diaz. Melton in the corner. Tries to pass the ball to Cooley, but ends up being a Durfee turn, turnover. Durfee with the ball. Boston, Cooley with the rebound, passes it to Mo, passes it to Melton. Melton up the court. Who goes for the layup and makes it in through traffic. Great, move, great ball movement. Um, great movement with Chanel Melton. Hilltopper shoots the ball, rebound boxer, Chanel Melton once again taking it up the court. Chanel Melton really showing up right now um, as we approach, approach the end of the game. With the Hilltoppers with the lead by five, 3.30 left, uh, two minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. Turnover by Moore. Brockton right now looking at, they making a comeback. Chantel Jordan lays it up. Um, That's a, the aggression you've been calling for, Mark. Brockton within three with 3.20 to go, and Brendan Kelly, head coach for Durfee, feverishly calls a timeout as he senses the momentum, the momentum shifting in Brockton's favor. And that's what you want as you approach the end of the game. You want the momentum on your side as the home team also, who has the crowd and the cheerleaders are on your side. So hopefully Brockton could keep the momentum on their side, not turn the ball over and make something happen right now late in the game. And that's also one of the advantage the boxers get, the fact that they have a great group of seniors on this team. So even when they're down like that, they, won't, they could bend them, but they won't break. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, 3.20 left in the game. The Hilltoppers will lead by three. Durfee 30, the Boxers 27. You tearing us up over here? I got you, man. Making friends with the officials, Mark, I see. Yeah, you know, you know it's always good to be friends with the officials, even in football, you know. The more friendly you're with the officials, you know, the more they, the easier they are on you. <laughs> They can't call fouls on us, remember that as commentators. We can say whatever we want. True, true. <laughs> there actually was a case a few years ago in the NBA where a home team radio announcer got ejected from courtside. I can't think of what team and what the announcer said or who he was at the moment, but it, it has happened. Yeah, it must have been embarrassing for that guy. The Hilltoppers with the ball. Brockton playing great defense right now. It, Brockton comes up. When Brockton comes up with the ball. Foul on the Hilltoppers. Brockton playing great basketball right now as we're pushing into the game. Three minutes left in the game. Ami Cooley. Turnover boxers. The Hilltoppers with the ball. Number three for the Hilltop is Jackson with the ball, passes it to number 10, Bradley Brooks. Murphy shoots a three, no good. Moore comes up with the rebound. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Beautiful block by number 14, Gianna Camaro. For the Hilltoppers. <laughs> Foul called on number four, Silver Moore for the Boxers. And number 14, Donna Camaro, will be shooting two at the line for the Hilltoppers. She makes the first of the two as Britos checks in for Cooley. Diaz 
takes the ball up the court for the boxers. Get off the rebound, Stephen, no hiding! Heels get fouled. Actually, it's a jump ball with the field top is receiving the ball. Almost coming up with the turnover. Still he'll top the ball. One minute and 49 seconds left in the game. Brockton comes out the turnover. Foul on, on Diaz. And that's been the story for most of the game, Peter. You know, this is a pretty close cool score. And Brockton's still in it with one minute and 46 seconds left. Theoretically, a two possession game for Brockton is it down by five. Diaz for three, this would be huge, no good. David, you got it. Don't hide. Stop it. It's funny, earlier Chantel Jordan attempted a three, and I got to say Jordan for three. Unintentionally had remembrances of Mark Albert calling Chicago's both games in the late 90s. on Jordan and the crowd is letting the referee knows they're not happy with that call right now and once again Gianna Camaro will be shooting two at the line and with a buck 11 left to go in the game in Brockton down by five Durfee at the free throw line head coach April Dingwell calls a timeout on the Brockton bench they have to come up with a game plan in the event that this Durfee player hits her free throw shots, misses her free throw shots, rebounds, what happens if you get to inbound down low? And like I told you before, this is right now the experience that the boxers have. With Chanel Melton and Chantal Jordan that has a lot of varsity experience, that's when they need those seniors to show up right now to help them take the lead back and come up with the win in this significant game. Brianna <laughs> Camaro, you know, will be shooting two for the Hilltoppers. And Brian looks like Brianna Camaro is bleeding, so the referee has taken a timeout. Wrap it up. She's got 30 seconds. Take, take, take. We don't have anything. We need a trainer. The trainer's right there. Can somebody, somebody on training staff, can we get some tape? There's no tape in here. All right, we're going to play the worst. We're going to play the worst. Take a timeout. Take a timeout. You have three. Uh, wait, wait till, tell me when Ladies and gentlemen, one minute and ten seconds left in the game. Hilltop is lead by five with the score. 33-27. Hilltop is with the lead. Injury timeout by the referees. Well, head coach Brendan Kelly deems Brianna Camara so important to the Durfee team that he calls it a timeout just to allow her some extra time to get her bloody knee bandaged up as Durfee has six one lead off and a ten to go.
Rock Murray. Box the ball. Something that wants you to know that it's quick to rebound. Fifth, four seconds of the game. Hill Toppers with the lead at 34 to 23. Barker was more passes to Melton as he hurts up the court. Possibility for a three point play for the Hawkins. It looks like Brandon Kelly, head coach, wants to call a timeout. And he'll do just that. 21.4 seconds to go. Four-point game. Murphy leads by 34-30. Mark is winning the turnover right now. Once again, Camaro, on a Camaro, will be shooting two again. Shoots first, Ash. Even if you're just going to have a foul line to get them tonight. And she makes a save. This is the first of the two. I think it's highly unlikely.
And this will be interesting because all indications are that This is the first time in quite some time where concurrently there's been a season where the Brock didn't miss him and Lady Box with both to 500. Tonight, Durfee defeats Brock in 730. And, you know, Durfee, they, they, they really came out here to play basketball today. There was a very focused team. And as um, we can see that the boxers, one thing that really hurt the boxers tonight is the turnover. It was just something I'm sure we'll take care of next week in practice. Brock and get another opportunity in Durfee to play Durfee later on the season. But right now, Durfee takes the lead in the big three as this was a divisional matchup. Brockton falls to three and four in the season and 0 and one in big three competition. Mark, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at the broadcast table tonight. Your very first broadcast and even got some play by an excellent job, my friend. We hope to have you back. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, our entire crew, my broadcast partner, Mark Asselin, I'm Peter Zimbor. We will see you next time. Brockton loses to Durfee, 37-30. Thanks for watching.